Let's see, I need a bunch of copper. There we go. Oh, base pieces, exterior modules. Miner, miner, no miner? Interior pieces, interior modules. Oh, miscellaneous, this is where it's gotta be. A strange place to put it. Bunch of beds, furniture. Oh, that'd be nice to have. Miners? What? Seriously? No miners? Now, oh, this really is a work of fiction. An interstellar capable civilization that still has to mine copper by hand? I mean, I built a model Mark I miner in my sandbox when I was six. Boy, were my parents pissed when I built that model smelter and turned it all into glass. Ah, I guess things could be worse. I mean, can you imagine being all alone on an alien planet? Hello, Moto. Hello, Moto. Uh, hello? Yes. And then, uh, no. Uh, what, do you, what do you mean, where'd I get? What? It, you mean you can see that from up there? Uh, no, sir. I mean, ma'am. Yes. No, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, right, right away, ma'am. Uh, breaks over. Time to get back to work. Man, is the upper management at fix it awfully strict. Those guys just have no fun. <laughs> uh, anyway, my name is Volkata, and welcome back to Pixel Perfect 67. <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoyed that little clip there. I, I really enjoyed it. That was a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, let me know. Did you enjoy it? Did, uh, did I fool you there? Were you a little confused at the start? Did you think maybe I had uploaded the wrong video? <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I know... You know, I know it's amateur, right? You know, I, I'm not a professional. And uh, whenever I do something like that, I have to learn it or relearn it from scratch. You know, lots of resources out there. And uh, I mean, it took an embarrassingly long time. I mean, I, I think just recording that and editing it took me about eight hours, but uh, it was worth it. It was absolutely worth it. Uh, okay, so anyway, let's get on with today's episode. Uh, I know it's been a little while. Uh, it's been actually quite a while since the last episode. and. It's going to be longer by the time this is done. This build has been uh, trying, uh, largely because ever since update eight, you know, we took a pretty significant hit in the performance of the game. And in some locations, it seems to be exacerbated. And we have seen that a lot in this area. And uh, it's not unusual for me to be operating under oh, 20, 25 frames per second. And, you know, sometimes when I turn or try to target something, it'll dip down to the single digits. And, uh, you know, that's not something I want to do on camera. And it's not fun to do playing. Um, you know, and I don't want to say that I'm not having fun playing this game because I love this game and I always want to play it. But, you know, with a, a project that is this challenging and operating under that low frame rate, it hasn't been exciting. <laughs> Um, but more importantly, I haven't been recording live because I don't want to subject you guys to low frame rates. And I've mentioned in past episodes related to this project that I didn't want to do another large mini series like we did with the turbo motors, uh, which, you know, that was always meant to be as long as it was. And that came out fantastic. And I love that series and I love that building. But this was never meant to be that. And we've already spent, I think, a couple episodes doing this. And, you know, at the end of the last episode, I was determined to finish this by this episode. And that's what we're going to do today. And I, there's, there's so much more to do. There is so, so much more to do. There's probably another 15, 20 hours worth of work here. And uh, I, I wanted to go real quick before I started doing it and explain to you why this is going to take so long. You see, we created a couple of problems for ourselves because of the gimmicks that we built this around. First off, you might recall, this entire building is built around one statistic, which is our exploiting the Mark III miner to get 780 per minute of the rarest resource 
in the chain for the electromagnetic control rods, which is Caterium. We have a Caterium node cranked up to give us 780 per minute Caterium, and then we did all the math following that. Well, anyone who's familiar with this game knows that whenever you're making quick wire, you get a lot of it for relatively little Caterium. And when you're talking about 780 Caterium per minute, you're talking about a whole lot of quick wire. And I, I don't have my spreadsheet up at the moment, but I think it's in the area of 4,000, 4,500, something like that, quick wire per minute that we're going to be creating here. And so that's gimmick number one. That's a self-imposed challenge. Gimmick number two was the roller coaster ride here. So I kind of hinted at this in the previous episode that we were going to do something funny with the rails. You know, we started this whole area by having the rail to go through all of the refineries over here. And we've kind of extended that to something kind of crazy. So the building itself is going to be like a miniature roller coaster. And we're going to have rail going through between all the machines or as much as we reasonably can. The, probably the top floors won't have rail running on them just because of the ramping that it takes to get up to that height to begin with. Because I don't want to do a spiral loop going up. So this is probably going to be the floor where the station is, but that still means a lot of tight looping and running of rail between machines, which means we are restricting where we can get machines. We don't want to have any clipping. We don't want the train run into anything. And we want to make sure it's all nice and clean. And so that's kind of the second gimmick that we've thrown in that is adding to this challenge. So as a result, we have this pretty tight footprint for the building where we're having to cram as many machines as we can in a relatively small space. And then we run into the problems of having quick wire coming out in very high quantities, right? 90 per minute per machine. That means we can only fit like seven or eight machines on one Mark V belt. So all of these Machines that are packed in together like this are going to have to have lifts coming out of them just to get the quick wire out. And to add to that, once we get higher up and we start building the machines that's going to take the quick wire, we're going to have to come up with creative solutions for bringing that quick wire into those machines while having this tight of a space to inject the materials in. So all that's going to be a lot of challenge. And it's a challenge that I'm looking forward to. We haven't done anything like this before, not to this scale. And when we challenge ourselves, we come up with new ideas and invent new ways of doing things that we can incorporate into future strategies. But that's going to take a long time, especially under this low frame rate for me to do all of it. Mathing all these belts out is going to take forever. Making sure everything's underclocked and overclocked and routed so it's not running into rail or whatever. It's all going to take a long time. So I'm going to get to it, and I'm probably not going to show any of the building on camera. You've seen me place machines in the past, and with the low frame rate in this area, I want to move around as little as possible on camera, because while I can still bring quality to my content, if the video is low quality, then it really detracts from it. So let me get to work, and I'll bring you back in when we've got enough done that we can examine how we've overcome our challenges. And days later... <laughs> um, yeah, tons and tons and tons of progress. So we're, we're closing in on being able to call this a completed project. Enough so that I wanted to bring you back in, you know, while there's no walls and, and while I'm still kind of working some of this stuff out, but I've got most of it. I've started to paint things, which has helped a lot in keeping track of where things are at. You know, and plus I like to paint them anyway, but, you know, doing them at this stage has made it easier for me to tell all of the blocks of assemblers apart you know when I'm going through a mathing things and whatnot so like here's a interesting situation we ran into as you can see we really had to pack things in here and there wasn't enough room to run two sets of mergers down here because these machines are not producing the same thing we have of course our stators here and our AI limiters so what I ended up doing is just sending all the AI limiters under the floor down here and just putting a bunch of splitters across or a bunch of mergers and then merging them, sending them across and then sending them back up to merge with the other side. 
And you can see there is a lot of conveyor belting going around here, a lot of ceiling conveyors. And, you know, everything is attached and of course everything is pixel perfect. <laughs> a bunch of 90 degree turns everywhere. I've lined up everything as perfectly as I can and it's coming out wonderfully. And I, I'm really liking the way this is coming out because this is going to be a very alive factory. You know, we've had a lot of very nice organized factories, but we're going to have belts going all over the place and materials going all over the place. And I think it's going to be super cool. So I'm looking forward to turning this thing on, but you know, it's going to show you how things are coming together. We have, you know, all of our machines over here for making our steel pipe. You can see the one on the end, of course, is underclocked because it's always the one on the end or typically the one on the end. And, you know, we talked in the previous clip about the challenges we're going to have with getting all that quick wire to the inputs when we have such little space to work with. Well, the solution, as I proposed, was to do purposeful grouping of machines based on the input rate. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. So in all cases, we're going to have the quick wire coming in from the bottom. So we have these stacked, right? So that means the bottom is going to be the quick wire belt because that's going to allow us to bring quick wire up just like this from underneath and inject it into the line. But also we have to make sure that our numbers are correct because we don't have room to do mergers with splitters and back and forth in order to have overflow go into another set. So the numbers have to be exact. And this works out real well for the stators because the stators use 60 quick wire per minute. And if you remember, we're producing 90 quick wire per minute per machine. That means three of these machines require 180 quick wire per minute, which was the equivalent of two machines producing quick wire. So we have a three to two ratio, and that's real nice because we can fit eight machines worth of quick wire under one belt. That's 720 quick wire per minute, and that one belt can supply 12 stator machines. So I've carefully mathed it all out so that we have all of them grouped exactly as necessary. And that's all taken care of. See, we have, yeah, we had more down here, right? Yeah. So, you know, we have them all running around and going up and then sharing and then more going across. And the numbers don't come out exact on the machines, but the final machines can do an overflow. And I think somewhere around here we had you know, a couple stray machines that ended up overflowing over into the AI limiter set, which was, you know, worked out just great because the math, we'd already done the math before we started. In fact, I think that's probably it right there coming from, coming from over there. But when we look at the AI limiters, the math isn't quite as convenient. You can see here we're using 100 quick wire per machine, which means there is no scenario where we have an exact translation. Because since we're producing 90 per minute, quick wire, that would require 10 quick wire assemblers producing 900 per minute, supplying nine of these machines for 900 per minute. But we can't put 900 per minute on a single belt. So instead what we're gonna do is we're gonna group eight of these. Seven of them will require 100 per minute at 700 per minute. And then we'll have 20 extra left on the belt. And so one of these machines in here, we'll just say this one right here, will underclock to 20% and it'll consume the 20 left over. So that will be eight quick wire machines supplying eight AI limiter machines. Now, of course, that means we're gonna to have to do that in every grouping, which will require us to have a couple of extra AI limiter assemblers that we didn't originally expect to probably up on the roof, but that solves all of our problems. And in fact, I've already mapped it all out, so I know it works. <laughs> well, I say I know it works. I still gotta turn it all on, but it's all coming together, right? It's all laid out. We've got all of our spacings done. You can see how all the conveyors are done. I still have to connect up all of the power lines, but I didn't want to do that until I'd already given you the tour because it creates a lot of visual spam. And as you can see, there are a lot of signs everywhere letting me know what's on each floor, how much of a given material is going up or down and everywhere and, and it's a big help when you're doing such a large project to be able to keep track of where everything is in case you have to come back to it or troubleshoot something later. But I've got more work to do. I've got to skin the building. I've got an idea for it, which you've probably already seen in thumbnail. So while I'm working on it, 
Let's play a clip I've already recorded of a quick trip over to the space elevator. Because as you know, we need to make sure we hit the space elevator every episode so that we can actually have it done by the time we're done with the series. <laughs> All right, I'm taking a quick break from the building. I don't know when this clip will actually find its way into you know the episode. Probably towards the end because I just want to keep you know continuity. Uh, but uh, if we look all the way over in the distance, you can see the progress of the building. Again, I'm not sure what it's going to look like, uh, you know, by this point in the video. But we do need to always make our way over here to the space elevator, at least once every episode, to make sure that we're pushing this progress. And last time we set up the smart plating, and we should be about done with it. Yeah, here. It's sitting idle, which means I need to collect up all the stuff from the various machines and then redistribute them so that we can get the final bit of product produced. So traditionally, of course, we empty our inventory. Also, you might have noticed there real quick, like when I was closing out the menu, there's a new entry here for a customizable HUD. Uh, at some point in time, I might show that to you. It's a new mod that I'm checking out. It's just a little quality of life thing that allows you to move around the elements on the screen, you know, the HUD elements. So you can see the build information on the bottom here, which says conveyor belt. Normally that's in the center and right up where the cursor is. And it's always in the way for me. So I've moved it out of the way and I'm kind of trying to see if I like it or not. But you know, I, I always find myself just hiding the whole thing and it'd be nice to not have to do that. So it's a little quality of life mod that I, straight across and I thought you know what I'm going to give it a little bit of a try here but uh, let's see here I'm going to grab all this stuff real quick like and get them distributed get the last smart plating placed I know that I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on video here doing this but you know we want to make sure that we get it done oh yeah look at all that all right I'm going to sort it all back out and we'll do our final checks on the smart plate to make sure we have the right numbers and then we'll get the next part started all right, the final ones are rolling off the line, hot off the presses. <laughs> All right, let's do some quick math here. And of course, as always, we just like to go into dismantle mode because it shows us the contents as well, because this is what we would get if we actually dismantled. So you can see over there, we have 1,200 smart plate, 2,400, 1,392. Is that everything that's in there? And then we should have four and four. It's inside the, uh, the lifts. So it's a 12, 24, 1200, 24. Now, sure, it's easy math, but sometimes I like to do this because you can close that window out and then go check something and then come back and it's still there. So it's kind of a way of keeping track of everything if you're trying to you know, bring a bunch of numbers together. So we said 1392. plus eight in the lifts, 5,000 is exactly how many we need. Excellent, excellent indeed. All right, so we don't need to send these back home because these are actually part of the next recipe. You know, it's an intermediate step. So I'm gonna do this real quick like here. I'm gonna disconnect these because we need the smart plating, we need motors, and we need rubber, lots and lots of rubber. So I'm gonna grab a, looks like mark one lift. Do you know what, that's fine, actually be more fine when we have our inventory so that we can build the lift but uh yeah mark one because i know that this is a slow recipe and mark one will still deliver everything fast enough so i'm not worried about you know moving them from one container to the other real fast i think this is good enough let's pop that in like that we're going to disconnect let's see there's none in here so we're going to disconnect right here that way, once these are producing, they don't, you know, cycle back around. So that's fine. We're going to want to bring the motors over here. So that container is going to be those. We're going to want motors in here. That is the right output on the smart splitter. So let's disable this. Ooh, none. To the right, we're going to go motor. There we go. And we'll have the rubber go over because we have a ton of it. It's like 37,000 or something like that that we're going to need. So I'm going to disconnect this real quick like. 
I just like to make sure everything's routing to where I want it before, you know, we connect them to the machinery here. All right, as you can see, we have rubber coming in. You know, we've been working for so long over there that we didn't have our train bouncing back and forth. In fact, there goes our train right now, picking up the rest of the materials. But I'm trusting that it's getting everything, so I'm fine with that. All right, here is our rubber. Look at all that rubber. So let's grab ourselves a belt. Mark II belt will be fine. I know we're moving 37,000, but we're only going to use like 60 per minute. So let's, uh, let's see here. This is our turbo motors and nothing in here. Regular motors, okay. And regular motors, we don't need these real fast either. Let's just plop them down. Let's see here. We're going to need to connect, connect. There we go. Let's, uh, let's speed it up a little bit because we want to get some of them actually, you know, on site. There we go. Perfect. Excellent. Ride it back. I love riding on belts. It's so fun. Okay. So we should have our smart plating in here. We're going to have our motors in there. And we should have rubber showing up over here. Yep, I'm seeing some in there already. Excellent. And let's set the recipe. Because our next thing is modular engines. Yeah, that's what it is. I'm looking over at the uh, at the spreadsheet I have off screen here. Modular engine. There we go. So you see, it's a very slow input. So, you know, two per minute across all four machines. That's only going to be eight per minute. So that's why I'm saying... We don't need more than a Mark One belt. I'm not gonna work on how fast stuff gets over here. But the uh, the rubber, the rubber, four of them together is 60. It is technically a Mark One belt, but I like to be a little bit above the speed. So we should be good. Let's copy that recipe, paste it, paste it, paste it. Perfect. Let's get our rubber coming in. everything else boom boom <laughs> it's zipping along Woo. <laughs> excellent okay yeah yeah those are all mark one four belts anyway <laughs> yeah you know these uh, manufacturers they aren't quick about doing stuff so we don't really typically need a uh, high-speed belting okay i'm gonna watch these for a second here make sure that we get one coming off each one of them and then i'm gonna go back to building and you probably have already seen the finished building. I, I imagine this is probably going to be the end of the episode. So maybe the next thing you see is the outro. I don't know. <laughs> you know, just timey-wimey stuff. All right, time for the final walkthrough, or drive-through in this case. <laughs> now we're starting all the way out here because, you know, when we laid out this track, I mentioned that I wanted to do a tunnel of some sort, so it wasn't just kind of disappearing under a floating building. <laughs> so as you can see, I did a tunnel, did a little bit of support walling. I think I'm gonna come back and probably wrap that around fully. But for now, we just kind of wanted to get an idea for what it would look like, and it looks cool. And I'm just, I'm glad I did it, because it just was weird going under that floating platform. And we're just gonna ignore the rest of the floating platform over here. <laughs> and we're gonna focus on the giant desert Fabergé egg off in the distance. Yeah, you know, the shape of it ended up being kind of sort of egg-like, and just one thing led to another, and I was like, you know what, we'll look around the internet for Fabergé eggs and get some inspiration off of it, and uh, that's what resulted. <laughs> now, there are some color variations around the different sides, so it's not completely static in its design, but uh, this is really inspired by a, a, just an egg I found on the internet. And uh, I really like the way it came out. You know, I, I like colors. I like colorful things. So I'm very pleased with this. And as you can see, I put it on a big stone pedestal. And in fact, everything is supported. We actually have supports there under the platforms. Even if it maybe isn't too realistic that that giant platform could support the weight of all those refineries, but we're not going to worry about that. <laughs> 
But, uh, yeah, you know, the original idea here was, you know, this drive through Refinery Row, as we can see the materials running across the belts below. And we're going to do a manual drive through so we can control the speed a little bit better. We can observe things. You know, if we had this thing on auto, we would be zipping through here real fast. Uh, but we have the, the great canopy with all the power cables. And we have the belt going over. I think it's so cool. I really like the way this came out. Of course, we turn the corner around to where all of the Caterium is running through. And as you can see, the Caterium follows along the side there. Now we're gonna see a little bit of backup on the belts while everything gets ironed out because you know some areas are gonna get delivered to before others while different materials arrive. Let's head up the ramp here and take a look from the inside. Into the double doors. Hop off here real quick like. Looks like our pack has been disabled. There we go. Perfect. Excellent. So as you can see, it's already producing pretty good. I already have a train that is running the cycle, which is why you see a gap in there. And uh, yeah, just, just, you know, seeing all the belts that are coming up to the floors and coming back down and running across the ceiling. It's just, it's so alive. I, I love this. You know, this is the most factory of any of our factory buildings. The material is going different directions. It's just so great. I, I am so happy with the way this came out. It's just, I know I've already spent quite a bit of time in here just observing it and watching it. I mean, it took about an hour for it to start producing, like real time, an hour, because of, you know, the different directions the materials are coming from and all the machines that they have to work their way through. But we're going to slowly work our way out here. I, again, I apologize for the frame loss. That's just, unfortunately, it's something we're going to have to to deal with hopefully when 1.0 comes out they'll have worked out the performance issues and you know maybe someday i'll be able to afford a nicer video card <laughs> uh, but you know we, we got to the series pretty good without having uh, any major issues but it's really neat you know from the inside with how colorful the walls are i really like the way it looks in here and it's just again it's so factory just all these tightly packed in machines all running and just materials going everywhere. I'm just very happy with this. It's so super cool. I'm gonna ride around here. Look from uh, all the way up here. I love this being suspended out in the open. It really feels kind of like a, a Disney ride or something like that. And we can see down there, there's all the belts for the copper ingots running to come into the factory. Pass into the big old double doors. Snake our way around under all these belts. And it's all different materials all over the place. It really adds to it. Different machines doing different things. It's so cool. And around to the final floor. This is where it all started. Everything has worked out so wonderfully. And back out to the outside. You can see we have pillars actually supporting all of the ramps. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I still got some stuff to clean up, but it's uh, it's fully functional and uh, it's fully built. See, we have that same general pattern going around all sides, but different color gradients. Yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased with the way every bit of this came out. But that is it for our time. So let's get back home and wrap this up. Oh, it is good to be back at home. You know, I really do like our little treat house that we have over at the electromagnetic control rod facility, but there is no substitute for being back home with the familiar skyline and our giant Christmas tree and Mr. Bean walking around the yard or floating around the yard. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but that's going to be it. We're going to wrap it for today. You know, we're running out of things that we need to do. I think, in fact, that the last major project or final non-space elevator product that we really need to do 
our cooling systems. I'll have to double check the spreadsheet and see what's left. And you know, probably get into some nuclear, even though we don't need it for power because our tower of power easily is supporting the entire factory on its own. But we'll look into that in the next episode. So thank you very much for coming back out. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you liked it, definitely leave a like. Don't be shy about stopping by the comment section. And if you haven't subscribed yet, consider doing so because you know, the series is probably gonna wrap up fairly soon. We're trying to beat 1.0 and maybe we'll start some other projects with other games that you might enjoy as well. But thank you very much for coming out and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. If you enjoyed this, you may want to check out one of these other videos and thank you very much for your time.